Stay tuned now for Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome, everybody, to Westchester Eye on the Radio. This is our first show of the new year of 2018. Ardina, welcome to your second year plus a month. Thank you. And what a way to start the show. We have... But John Charan's here, And John Charan is here. I'm always, I am. I'm always happy to see John Charan. John well, Charan you know, is mine. It's, it's, it's good to be back. I mean, this was the longest gap, I think, that we've had in the show ever in terms of being away for two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. And uh, it's good to be back. I had separation anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, had, I had separate anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we have a guest on today that you... Um, Ardita, you and I have known for over 30 years. I tell you, what a way to start the first show of 2018 i mean it's like uh our buddy our friend I, his name is julian phillips i always call him julian because he reminds me of julian and it, it, it is a a term of endearment and i always called him jules no nah, you got to call him julian that's my boy julian phillips so julian i know you've been hanging there on the phone talk to us Yes, yes. I got to tell you, yeah, Julian, uh, Jules, uh, both, and Peter and Ardina, Lord have mercy. We spent so many years on the streets, uh, so many different kinds of stories, and the years that we did spend, you know, in a way, you know, just shaped uh, the way the city uh, is today because of the things that happened. You know, we, we really were a part of recorded history, and we helped record that history. So I'm just so happy to be on the show and happy to hear both of your voices. Yours as well, Julian. We, uh, you know, I, 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 we are Facebook friends, so I did know about your, your new about to happen success, um, <laughs> and I'm, uh, it's and you gave it a great name. It's got double triple entendre to it. Why don't you tell us the name of the restaurant where it's located? Yeah, uh, the name of the restaurant is, of course, uh, the Sound Bite Restaurant. And I wonder where you got that from. It's in the heart of Hell's <laughs> Kitchen uh, on 737 Ninth Avenue, which will actually be opening up. The grand opening is uh, is next week. Um, obviously, the name, the sound bite uh, from news. You know, you're you're getting a sound bite from somebody, and you know, and the name came to me because I mean, you may or may not know that I've been uh, cooking for well over 30 years, and I've been in kitchens from here to Wuhan, China, and um, this has always been a dream. Uh, it was kind of accelerated in the last five years, but the name came to somebody that you guys also know very well, um, a photographer from Channel 11, Pix News, uh, called Kenny Hogan. Yep. And um, we were sitting in a crew car one day, uh, either coming or going to a story, and uh, he, um, you know, I was telling him about the rest, he said, you got to call it Soundbite. And I said, <laughs> wow, yeah, that, that sounds really good. Uh, and sure enough, that's how the name was born. And, and for the audience, if, if people uh, don't know Julian, Julian worked in the trenches for many years as a broadcaster. He worked with NBC, he worked with Fox, and he also worked with Arise News. And PIX. And PIX. So, That's right. So Julian is, is well known in the industry and uh, held in, in high esteem. But he couldn't hold a job. He kept moving to different stations. <laughs> but that, that's why, you know. <laughs> it, <laughs> sometimes people. Well, you know, I, look, you know how much TV people are. You know, you move around from station to station. I'm not unique, uh, but I, I was fortunate enough to spend um, some, some good years uh, in the city, both at, uh, at PIX and NBC. A brief stint at CBS. Uh, prior to, to moving over to uh, PIX. I do remember but, that. Uh, m- many years. I mean, the bulk of my career actually was about nine years at PIX, about four or five at, uh, at NBC, and that's where I actually got my start. And then, of course, I went to the network, uh, uh, the Fox, uh, after that. I have to tell you, I have, I have never watched the Fox network, so I did not see, ever see you on Fox because I, I never, ever. And I worked, as you know, I worked for Murdoch for many years in, in two different places, but I... Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Peter, of I, course, you know I know that. Yeah. I saw him on Fox, and uh, you watched with, Fox. Well, oh, because because, because, because Julian I, because and, and, and Eric to, was on. Well, I wanted to see Julian, and I'm only going to say that Julian held his ground. <laughs> of course he. Of course. And he did. I, I, I will leave it there. But um, so. Well, so, I mean, you know, I, you know, it's, <laughs> it's been many years, and I, you know, people ask me about Fox, and I was actually approached when they had the, um, not Gretchen's, obviously the sexual harassment, but they had the. Uh, the racial discrimination suit. I was contacted by a few people, and it's been so, it's been so many years that uh, 
you know, I finally opened up a little bit about it. But, um, you know, I, I do talk about it a little bit now, not much. Um, but, you know, when asked about it, you know, I, I talk about it. I have no problems talking about Fox and the Shadow. My, my, my favorite stories about Julian were always when we were in the field, Ardina, that no matter how um, intense I would get about things, and as we, we all know that I, I was an intense questioner. I, I, you? Yeah. Yes, but, you were. But Ju- <laughs> Julian would always pull me inside and go, Peter, let's just calm down. I mean, you know, we got we got to come back tomorrow and do the same thing. That's Different right. story. Got to calm down, Peter. And I always appreciated <laughs> that of Julian because Julian, you know, was a very stable, steady guy. And I want to hear much more when we come back. We're going to our first. This is our long break, Julian. So while we're on break, uh, maybe you want may want to have a few chicken wings or some uh, or, or some of your famous. Um, Black and chicken wings. Black and chicken wings and, and your mac and cheese. And I my also su- want to hear... southern smoked mac and cheese. Your then. southern smoked <laughs> mac and cheese. And also how Italian figures into the menu of this restaurant. Anyway, today, everybody, we have with us Julian Phillips, who is one of the nicest people I ever met in the news business outside of Ardina, of course. Aww. And John, 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 John's not that nice. But, um, but Julian is a gentleman and always was a gentleman. And it's really glad that we have him on our air today. We're going to a Fox News break and a Fox Business News break. I can't get away from Fox no matter where I go. And we're going to break on WVOX and WVOX.com. And now with Fox News commentary, here's Fox News Radio's Todd Starnes. WVOX. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome back to our first show of 2018. I'm John Sharan along with Peter Moses and Ardina Seward. And we're speaking on the air with Julian Phillips who is a uh, former broadcaster who has a new restaurant, The Soundbite, uh, which is due to open. And Julian, maybe first off you can tell us a little bit about the concept and the cuisine for The Soundbite, and then you can give us a little bit of a rundown about your schedule for opening. Absolutely. Uh, the Soundbite is a very unique concept in, in, in the sense that it doesn't exist. And, you know, they, they normally say there's nothing new under the sun, but this is. Um, uh, the sound bite, uh, obviously, is, is a compilation of two careers coming together. Mine, uh, with news and my wife, who is a Grammy selected uh, jazz recording vocalist. So when you come into the sound bite, uh, it looks somewhat like a new studio. You have a 30 foot bar, uh, refurbished from the old bar that was here, Malloy's Irish Pub, and you have uh, studio lights all around the bar by the flat screens. Uh, along the walls, you have pictures of, of most of the, not most, but a lot of the colleagues that I've worked with over the years, 8 by 10 glossies and some of the people that, you know, of course, Ardina and Peter, you know very well. Uh, my but Ardina, but no, but Ardina, no picture of you. <laughs> well, actually, there, 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 there is one picture of me. And it's America's Newsroom on the weekend featuring me and Geraldo and uh, Juliet Hunting and a few folks from the Fox News team. So I have that up there. Plus, I'm going to have a few other uh, pictures of the times, you know, during on the street, uh, some things that you guys know very well, you know, uh, others uh, that uh, most people may not, but, um, you know, we'll have that there. A couple of mic cubes up from the stations I've been there. <laughs> my wife in the front, we have a baby grand piano, uh, and um, that is my wife's office, and that's where the jazz and blues will be taking place, and a number of photographs and posters of her appearances around the world, and a number of uh, well-known jazz recording artists. So it's going to be nice. And, 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 and a name that you guys probably know pretty well, Phil O'Brien, a former assistant news yes. director at Channel uh, 4 and, of course, New York 1, he donated an Associated Press teletype machine back from, wow. I think, the 70s or the 80s. So when you come in, you're going to see that. Um, and it's going to be great. So there'll be jazz music. Um, there'll be blues. Uh, there'll be great uh, Cajun, Southern, Italian fusion food. Uh, that's and, an interesting uh, that's combination. something that I, I came up with. That's, um, that's an interesting combination of food. Well food you've got mm-hmm. there. It's an interesting combination that you've got there when you mention uh, Cajun, Southern, and Italian. That's uh, that's not uh, a conventional combination. No, but it works very, very well. I-, I was in the kitchen one day experimenting with some wings, and um, I really uh, became attached to the, the, the uh, technique of blackening that was uh, founded by Paul Prudhomme, mm. 
uh, who uh, actually I became very friendly with before he died. In fact, I, I developed a spice uh, down at his uh, research labs in Louisiana. So I, I had these wings, and um, party wings, and I had a cast iron skillet, and I just started uh, uh, dipping them in some uh, olive oil with the spices on them, Cajun spices, and uh, I put them into a skillet, and uh, it came out, and I said, wow, this really tastes pretty good. Mm. So I started experimenting and then uh, testing them on a number of people. And uh, from here to North Carolina, the people were saying, my God, you've got something here. Far different than buffalo wings. So uh, a small part of the menu is that, but it's also a very big part. I'll explain in a second. But getting the fusion of it. Uh, so you take a Cajun wing, and then you have dipping sauces that people like their wings in. And mind you, these wings are so good. If I'm saying to myself, you don't need any dipping sauces. But I started experimenting with pesto sauce. Um, a puntanesca sauce, Ooh. okay? Um, then I have a garlic sauce. Then I have a Cajun ramelade sauce. Then a buffalo sauce and a barbecue sauce. But the Cajun meets Italian with the puntanesca, and I have my own recipe for puntanesca, uh, as well um, as um, you know my pesto sauce. So that's where you have the Cajun and Italian there. But you didn't you didn't you didn't go. You didn't go to a prostitute to get the recipe for puttanesca, right? Oh. Well, that no. The you know, legend is that that's that is not that's what, what it, that's what that's a no, derivation of that sauce. No, yes, that, but, that is but, not. But, that is but, not. But, that is not. It came from. It came from uh, supposedly when when the sailors were away, and their wives were were allegedly making this sauce, and the sailors couldn't come back and say that their wives were, um, shall we say, consorting with someone else. But that became the name. It's called putanesca sauce. Right, and, and, and it translates to prostitute sauce. Julian, I'm well, going to let you take you over I, here. I can't say that you'll prostitute yourself on my sauce, but I'll tell you, once you taste the <laughs> sauce, you're going you're, you're gonna to forget others. You know, it's funny. You know, I, I have uh, grown up around Italians, and uh, some of my very close friends are Italian, and, and chefs as well. You know, Joe Bastiani is a very good friend of mine. Uh, and the Abatinos, who have a restaurant right next door, you know, Italians are very, very emotional when it comes to their cooking and their food. And if you have any kind of variation from what they do or how they do it, it's like, ah! So uh, Dominic Abatino, when I was telling him about my ingredients, I told him I used roasted red peppers. He says, oh, no, my God, that's sacrilege. You can't do this. You can't do this at all. I said, well, why not? I said, Giada de Laurentiis. She said, yeah, but she's not from Napoli. I, I have the best sauce. I said, well, you know, Dominic, I'm sure you like your sauce. I think I put mine up against yours any day. So I have my own way of cooking my Punta Nesta sauce. And, That's and good. It's, it's going over well. But, you know, you, you have that. Um, you also have, for instance, uh, the Cajun. My, okay, for instance, Southern um, and Cajun. Uh, my Southern smoked mac and cheese, very traditional, you know, uh, no variations. There are like about a billion ways people are cooking mac and cheese. Mine is the old-fashioned way, and I'm sticking to that. But on top of it, some of the toppings are blackened shrimp Ooh. Uh, uh, and dewy sausage. Um, alligator sausage, uh, you know, chicken uh, breast, uh, blackened chicken. Uh, these kinds of uh, toppings are going to be on uh, the the, uh, the southern smoked mac and cheese. You can have it plain or with any of those additions on it. Uh, then we're going to have, as we expand the menu, uh, different kinds of pastas on there, you know, rigatoni, gemelli, uh, those kinds. And um, we're going to have different varying kinds of sauces with those. Uh, so you have this mis mix match of, of, of different um, flavors from these three great traditions. And for some reason or other, they work really well. So when people start tasting this stuff, they say, wait a minute, a blackened wing, and people don't even know really what that is. Uh, and then puttanesca sauce, or pesto sauce, or garlic sauce, are you kidding me? I said, this ain't Buffalo Wild Wings, folks. You know, <laughs> totally different thing here. By the way, Julian, have you ever worked in kitchens, or are you... Hung out in kitchens. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've worked in a few. Uh, most of the kitchens that I've worked in, 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 in any earnest, were soup kitchens. Mm. Uh, you oh, know, yes. uh, but in terms of working in a, a, uh, a commercial kitchen, no. But I've been in a lot of them, and I've had a number of contests. In fact, when I was at Fox, I won a national celebrity recipe contest over the likes of Chef Emeril and, and uh, other folks. Uh, it was a grilled salmon smothered with black bean sauce and and and, uh, and, and grilled shrimp. Well, on that, no, on, that, on that note, we're going to be going to another break, Julia. But this is a this is a very quick hour. After you're open for a few months, we're going to have to revisit 
you and and t- we still have another half an hour with you, but we're going to break now. But we're with, we're with Julian Phillips. He's talking about his new restaurant, the Soundbite. And by the way, if you want to invest in his restaurant, when we come back, he's going to tell you a way to connect to him because he's trying to raise some funds for this restaurant, the Soundbite, on Ninth Avenue in uh, in Manhattan in the Theater District. This is WVOX, WVOX.com. We are Westchester Eye on the radio, and we'll be right back. With world and national news, here is the latest update from Fox News Radio on 1460 WVOX. Radio. I'm Rich Dennison. The Department of Homeland Security is ending special protections for nearly 200,000 immigrants from El Salvador who fled their country because of a 2001 earthquake. Salvadorians living in the U.S. with temporary status will now have until September of next year. 1460 WVOX. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. We are back live for our first show of 2018. This is Westchester Eye on the Radio. I am Ardina Seward with my guest, with my guest Julian Phillips and co-host John Duran and Peter Moses. And we were talking. And we have a friend in studio. And I have a friend in the studio who I've known since I was a teenager. His name is Dennis Bartlett, and Dennis is a sound man. Covered every war zone you can think of, but he's here, calm today. It wasn't with my daughter in Montreal, though. <laughs> Cover every war. That's a separate show. That's so, a separate so show. Today Julian, is Julian's show. Julian, tell us about how people can connect to the soundbite. Well, I got to tell you, I, I, I have some good news, but maybe bad news, um, in the sense that um, we have we are shutting down the GoFundMe site because we have basically raised all the money that we need. And, you know, interestingly enough, the, the GoFundMe uh, site is, is a great site. But uh, uh, such a small percentage came from that. It really wasn't a big percentage at all. Um, I'd say maybe like 0.1% of the money that we raised came from that. But I have two great partners, uh, Alvin Sinkler uh, and Clarence Isaac, who, have, uh, who are backing uh, this project. Uh, one is a very, very longtime friend of mine, and both are financial gurus. Uh, and uh, they are managing uh, the books, the accounting, and they're very great guys. So uh, the, the GoFundMe page, uh, actually, after I go back home tonight, I'll be shutting it down. Uh, no no more need for that. So how to support the soundbite? Just come on down and wrap your lips around some wings, mac and cheese, burgers, and other delicacies we'll have, and uh, we'll go from there. What's the, time, what's the timetable for when you're going to open there, Julian? Yeah, uh, the, the grand opening will be uh, on the, uh, the, the 19th of uh, this month. Uh, the big date, and Ardina and Peter, you better come, is the press invite. And uh, right now, uh, it's pretty much jam-packed. Um, a few cameras down here and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And what but day will be? Ardina and I will be, will be there. We will de- and what, what, what day is that, uh, Julian, the, the press? Uh, the, the 18th is a Thursday. Okay, the 18th. We will definitely, definitely be there. We'll be there. You better be there. I mean, Ardina, I have your name up here. I have a a big thing at the TV Crew Hall of Fame. Mostly (laughs) everybody knows how how much uh, the crews and I really uh, got along well. So I have a Hall of Fame for the crews. For me in TV, uh, I love my producers, news directors, and all the other kind of stuff. But for me, the, the straw that stirred the drink always the crews. That was they for knew that, more. They knew yeah. more. They did more. They were more critical. Uh, that's how we got things done. Uh, I was in a number of very dangerous situations over the years: mm-hmm. Crown Heights, Korean boycott. You yep. name it. Remember it well. Nine Eleven. Without my crews, I never would have made it. So though, that's that's. I mean, I get choked up when I think about my crews. And, you and, know, we <clears throat> we had a relationship, and I love I love my crew guys. And I want to put the phone number out there for anybody who's listening, and they want to give a shout out to Julian. It's nine one four six three six zero one one zero. That's nine one four six three six zero one one zero. So give a call and uh, give a shout out to Julian. Now, Julian, mm-hmm. what is your your competition? I know that the restaurant is going to be not going to be, but is at fiftieth and ninth. So where do you stand in terms of competition from other 
restaurants because your place sounds pretty pretty unique. Well, it is, and, and you know, and in a sense, I can't say there's competition. You know, one thing that restaurateurs want is they want to be located in an area where there's a bunch of restaurants. And, you know, Ninth Avenue and Hell's Kitchen arguably is uh, the probably number one restaurant restaurant destination uh, in the world. Why so? Because you have uh, from my, I'd say, I'd say maybe 36th Street all the way up to 55th, 56th. Ninth Avenue and Hell's Kitchen is dotted with an array of restaurants and bars. You have everything from Irish bars. You have uh, Thai, Japanese. Uh, you've got uh, certainly continental American, Italian. Uh, you name it. So you know when you have a situation where you have a ton of restaurants, it gives uh, you know uh, um, restaurants an opportunity to get overflow. So the more restaurants, the better. You know, and so for me and for our team. Uh, being in Hell's Kitchen works very, very, very well. I, outside of that, of course, you know, we're, we're right by the theater district, Times Square, the commercial district. We're about a stone throw from Rockefeller Center on 50th Street, where we're located. Uh, we're on 9th Avenue, but near the corner of 50th. We're straight down from the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, the ocean liners coming in. And so we have everything here. There's foot traffic galore, 24-7. We're a couple of blocks from Justin Timberlake's place, Southern Hospitality. Nice spot but still different from ours. Uh, so we really don't have that kind. So when people want to come here, it's great. On, on top of that, uh, we, we have the only live jazz on the strip. Right. Um, you know, so we've got people coming from all over. And, of course, Barbara performing with so many world-class musicians. Uh, they're lining up. In fact, Barbara is already booked up until uh, April. Wow. Uh, for musicians and some really, really great, great headliners. So we're going to have a lot of fun here. And we had spoken earlier, I, I think, uh, before you came on the show, about streaming live what happens at the restaurant. Did mm -hmm. I, did I did, mm -hmm. expand, expand that for me? Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's another component. You know, there, there are a number of people I have no idea why uh, they, they still want to hear my voice. And I've I got to tell you, I miss hosting. I don't miss being out on the streets or anything like that or anchoring, but I miss hosting. And I, I think I really made my mark at Fox News doing that for four or five years. Um, so what we've done, we're going to wire the uh, sound bites for live broadcast, uh, and we're going to have uh, news and entertainment shows coming out of here. Uh, a, a derivative of Playboy After Dark, you'll have the soundbite after dark, you know, and we'll be doing some entertainment programming, but also news, political programming, you know, that's what I do uh, the best, uh, you know, political programming, and uh, we're going to have that. So already we have some shows lined up. Uh, you know, I'm also uh, a Christian, and uh, so uh, there's a Christian dating show that appears on TV, and they want to do a segment here, and I have some broadcasters that... Uh, are interested in coming on board so we can do some shows, maybe syndicate them, uh, and, and do some live uh, broadcasts out of here as well. So that's going to be very exciting. So when, when the jazz is not uh, uh, live, uh, we will all have some great programming. And, and, of course, that means maybe you guys need to come down here and do a little show yourself as well. That would be great to be, to be, to be broadcasting live from the soundbite. Woo, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Straight that out sounds, of Hell's Kitchen. That sounds like big fun. <laughs> I, I imagine the, the, the camera on you in the kitchen doing cooking commentary. Oh, my God. You know, I, I may do some of that. I mean, I've done some cooking shows. I mean, you know, the last couple of years I've been on, uh, of course, Pix and Fox and, of course, Fox News Channel. You know, I cooked a few things. I'm, I'm not so interested in doing cooking shows so much other than going on quarterly. Like, for instance, we're going to have uh, – we're going to feature – once a month, uh, you know, 12 months out of the year, uh, various well-known chefs. So six, six of the uh, months will have well-known people like Billy Gallagher from Becco, David Pasternak from e Esther. Oh. Uh, then I want to have uh, some uh, people who are not well-known. One of my friends is a retired uh, uh, lieutenant, NYPD, Vice Squad. And this guy is a fantastic chef. Uh, another friend of mine is a well-known photographer, John Pinder Hughes who's written two cookbooks. <clears throat> and uh, I want some people from the neighborhood, you know, uh, just to maybe, you know, I've befriended some folks, and they claim they have the best, best meatballs in town. Well, <laughs> we'll find out. So one day out of the month, uh, we'll feature them on social media, and we'll do a little bio on them. They'll come in, and uh, I'll have my line cooks uh, do their recipes and cook them, feature them, and uh, <clears throat> they'll put out a little chef's jacket and walk around and smooth the crowd. Um, and it's one way to get other people involved, to be more interactive, and also get the community involved, too. And that's something that's 
uh, very, very um, important to me. And I also want to just put this in here, too. Uh, you know, my, my, one of my goals was to, to give something back. So I was kind of prayed on this. And uh, my, my friend upstairs, God, told me, go to the Bowery Mission. So mm. uh, part of our staff, the percentage of our staff, will pe- be people who are down on their luck, uh, who uh, are looking for opportunity. And so we're going to give opportunities of, you know, bartenders, busboys, uh, waitresses, that kind of stuff, dishwashers, to people who don't have any money. Uh, and we're going to give them a job and an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, so this, yeah, this, this is uh, that, that. That was another thing that was very important. Uh, the robbery myself. Karma works. Now, will, will you have um, logistically? Will you have delivery service? Yes, we will, but not starting off. You know, the one. The, 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 you know, a lot of my friends who have been in this business, and I've been fortunate enough to have them. You know, outside of Joe Bassianis, the, the Cole brothers. You know, they they own the Central Park Boathouse. At least uh, one or two of them do, and stuff like that. It's a Julian. You're going to have to have the, the, the two things that, that are going to kill you. Not enough business and then too much business. Mm. Um, you know, because if you're overrun, and unfortunately for us, with all the publicity that I have, you know, being in the business, you know, we've got a ton of publicity of stations that are going to come down with their cameras. We're going to have a problem perhaps of having maybe too much. You know, we're a small spot, you know, like, like 60 seats, uh, and we're going to have to manage that as best we can. And Julian, but, you know, you're going to have to hold yeah, your thought. Th- you're going to have to hold your thought there because uh, with the music, we're going to be taking another break. You're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio here on WVOX 1460 AM and heard worldwide at WVOX.com. I'm John Charan, along with Peter Moses and Ardina Seward, and our guest on the air today, Julian Phillips, former broadcaster, now restaurant entrepreneur, with the soundbite due to open later this month in Manhattan. We'll be back with more conversation with Julian after this brief Fox News break, so stay tuned. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. We are back live. This is Westchester Eye on the Radio. I am Ardina with John Turan, Peter Moses, and our guest today is Julian Phillips, who's opening a restaurant, folks, called The Soundbite. And I hear we have a caller on the air. Julian, do you know who that caller is? Ardina, good afternoon. My name is Mitch. Yes. <laughs> Julian, do you remember Mitch? Yes. Julian? Mitch. Yes, Mitch. Think, think Fox. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I was a producer for Julian uh, back when he was anchoring at Fox News. And yes. I want to, first of all, tip my hat to one of the smoothest and nicest talents I've ever worked with there. Oh, my God. You, you, you are <coughs> And, you know, let, let, me, let me say something, too. Um, Fox was a place that had some of the, the greatest talent. Uh, and I'm talking about both in front and behind the cameras. We really had some great people there, and you know, you were certainly one of the best. Uh, you know, cable news is very difficult. It's much more difficult than, than than regular news, and and you really have to be on your game. And you know, people like Mitch and others really helped me elevate it because I was scared to death after my like first two days. I didn't think I would make it. So, God, it's so good to hear your voice. Oh, you were you were wonderful, and, and even back then, of course, you were talking about your two loves of jazz and food. I must say, listening to this show from the beginning, uh, you had me when you described the new restaurant as uh, just like a newsroom with a giant bar. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mitch, I've worked in by the way, Mitch, Mitch, I just Mitch, retired after fifty Mitch, years. What is, Mitch, what is your last name? And and Davis. Yeah, Mitch okay. Davis. <laughs> And, oh, yeah. you know, I've never actually seen a newsroom with a giant bar, but I've always wanted to. Oh, there were a well, few, you know, but something. nobody you're, talked you're about them. Now. And, you know, New York, you know, Elaine's no longer exists. And, of course, back in the day, uh, when, you know, I think news is really real news, like the lion's head, where all sorts of people swapped ideas oh, and yeah. stories. Well, now you have the sound bite. Yeah, Peter knows about that. And, Ardina, I know you do, too. Did you hear, uh, did you hear what's closing next week? Yes, Langan's, Langan's is closing. Langan's is closing. McGlade's is gone. Chips is gone. You own the territory, man. That's right. Yeah. You're, you're it, yeah. Jules. Well, you're now it. it's Julian's. 
well, you know, this will be a place, uh, you know, we can hang our hats. And, you know, for those of us who are no longer working, reminisce about the old days and some of the new folks who really want to kind of know how news is really done. <laughs> I'm biased. Uh, you can learn something if you come here. Uh, you know, this, this will be a home for all journalists. And as a matter of fact, uh, there will be 10% off the, uh, the ticket uh, for journalists who either I know or can show a press card. Uh, this is home for, for people. Julia, like I said I wasn't going to say this on air, but I'm changing my mind. And Mitch, please stay on for the rest of the show. We're happy to have you. Um, your friend Phil O'Brien should be able to call in a favor and have New York One do uh, do a live opening from there. They, 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 they can certainly shoot a show from there. They're not that far away to begin with. And why why not have them come? And also, since you're right around the corner from Fox and since uh, you know Langens is now closed, you might be able to, to talk some of these news organizations into, into doing shows from your bar. Well, you know, that's, that's an idea. And it's something that I've toyed with. You know, but right now... The thing that we need to do, Peter, and, and thank you for that. It, it, it's, it's great thinking, you know. Um, we want to make sure that we offer two things. Uh, okay. Great, great food, consistently great food, quality control, uh, and great music. And since I'm new to this, we want to get that under our belt. Absolutely. After I'm not saying you should have them there next week, but at some point, you know, you, you can get a hold of Kristen O'Shaughnessy. She has some, uh, she, she has some pull there, and I know that you guys are friends. And she oh, yeah, should... well, actually, Kristen, Kristen uh, uh, sent me two 8x10s of herself. Of course she did. <laughs> of course she did. Oh, well, she's love, stunning. I got a little, <laughs> yeah, no, no she's, she's wonderful. And, um, yeah, I will, uh, you know, uh, we, we are going to entertain that as well. And that's something that you should. And you're also not that far from, uh, from ABC. You're, you're pretty cl- you're, you're right up the street from Channel 2. Mm-hmm. And what mm-hmm. will your hours be, Julian? How late will you be open? Okay, we're going to be open Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 1. Saturdays and Sundays, well, Saturdays from 10 a.m. because we're going to have a brunch. We're going to be known for the best frittatas. That's also another Italian dish, as you know, mm. uh, in New York City. Uh, from 12, uh, from 10 to uh, 1. And then on Sundays from 10 to 9 p.m. We're closing down a little bit early on Sunday. You know, Julian, if you were nice to me, John Curran could tell you that there are some things that I actually make that are as good as anything you'll ever serve there, John. Julian. So, so, Julian, so Julian, you need you need to talk to you. Julian. You need to talk to Peter off air because he's absolutely right. The fact is, we're talking about a man who, as part of his hidden talents, uh, has a tremendous gift when it comes to baking. Well, well, Peter, you you put your foot in it, which <laughs> means now that you're going to have to step up to the plate. So you're going to be one of my chefs of, uh, out of these 12 months. So, I mean, and I don't want to hear you backing down now. My <laughs> I, n- I never back down. And, Julian, by the way, I make many different kinds of brownies, including drunken brownies. Legal ones? Do you make legal ones? I make legal ones, but I make drunken brownies. And, and if you have... I, I kind of I kinda like that. Yeah, but... That, the- that's what I, Look, you know, I, I want to highlight that. So, listen, we got to figure out a month for you, and I'm going to social media the heck out of it. Uh, and everybody's going to get drunk over your drunken brownies. Well, the ba- the brownies that Peter makes are truly extraordinary. They and I used to sell them to, to restaurants up in Westchester, high end restaurants for a ridiculous price. But the fact really? of the matter, fa- the fact of the matter is that that when he does make these brownies and he chooses to share them with people, they are treasured like the great gifts that they are. <laughs> well, look, I got to tell you, that is great for me. This this will be great, Peter. You know, I'm going to hold you to this. I even, I, I, they even have a nickname for me. What, Miss Topless? That, no, the, the ma- Baconator. The, the, mad, the Mad Baker. <laughs> Listen, I just want to put one thing in here that's very important, because uh, I know we're, we're, we're short on time. Uh, the one thing I wanted to do, you know, the wings and stuff, you know, what the anchor bar was to the buffalo wing, um, the sound bite would be to the black and wing. I really want to revolutionize how people eat wings for a number of reasons. We can talk about that another time. But I also wanted a place for my wife to sing. Barbara has been everything to me. Mm. She's been very supportive. Outside of being a world-class jazz vocalist, she now has a home where she can sing. She, 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 I, I don't deserve her. She's much better than me. Um, no no great, argument from she's, us. She's a, great, she's a great human being. And uh, I'm so proud that I could provide a place for her just to sing 
and to provide a places for other uh, musicians. And we're also going to be doing workshops for up-and-coming jazz artists. And we're going to be doing a, a non-profit foundation for that as well. So Barbara King, is she is king. She's king to me, and she's just a great human being, and I'm I'm just so proud I can do something. Yeah, Ju- uh, Julian, I see your website is still under construction. We're running out of time. Uh, is there a Facebook page where people can follow you? Not a Facebook page yet. All that's coming. Right now we're just uh, working on warp speed to get open on the 16th. Uh, that is just a friend Wait, is family it the, day. Is it yeah, the 16th? The, yeah, the website 16th? is there, and, and we're gonna, that'll be up and running in about two weeks, uh, and then we can go from there. So it's opening the 16th, but your open house for the media is the 19th. Yeah, here's the deal. Friends and Family Day is the 16th, and that's not open to the public. That's going to be our soft opening. Uh, the 18th, there's a skip a day from the 17th. The 18th will be press, and you know how raucous that's going to be with the likes of Peter Moses and Ardina and that company here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back into combat mode. Get out of my shot. <laughs> oh, come on. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch you got to come down. Um, uh, and then, of course, the, the 19th is the grand opening to the public. So we're going to go the 18th, Ardina, right? That's right. We will be there with bells and whistles, and I'm going to bring my camera. You know something? Bring it. Bring it. I may bring, you know I mean, I, I may bring you some know. brownies for you to, for you to sample. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, you know, we're going to have to go now, Julian, but uh, Ardina, who do we have next week? Next week we have the Republican candidate for New York State Senate, whose name is Sarmad Cause I can hardly pronounce his name. Kosjeta. Okay, I hope we can get the name down straight. But it's a beautiful last name that I am massacring, but he will correct us next week when he is on the show and he'll talk about his ambitions. But before we go again, Soundbite Restaurant. It's on 9th Avenue in Manhattan. The guy who owns it and his brainchild this is is Julian Phillips. You should Google him. Julian is one of the great newscasters that New York has had in the past 35 years. Or 40 years. And it opens January 19th. And it opens January 19th. The Soundbite Restaurant. Everybody, you should get paid. Get on a train and go down there. Bye now. 1460 WVOX and WVIP HD2. New Rochelle. A Whitney Global Media Station. Touting tax reform. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. President Trump said to tell farmers at a Nashville convention they'll benefit from his tax cut plan. He is scheduled to speak minutes from now.